And we're going to jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out new issues every Monday. You can check that out right under the newsletter tab on TFNN, the Tiger Forex Report. You can sign up for $97. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Teddy's got a couple of outstanding webinars as well, right under the services tab. You're talking some options, capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. We were just talking some options prior. And then candlestick patterns, stock and option strategies. Check those out under the services tab. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, boy, we got a lot to talk about, man. A lot's happened since we last talked to you. We didn't talk to you last week, right? So we got the whole Middle East war that's been happening. Um, where do you want to kick things off? Yields through the roof? Where, where do you want to start the conversation, Teddy? Yeah, I think that no matter what yields, you have to look at them as being very bullish still. Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of funny. I had a conversation with a, a friend of mine who's been down at the Board of Trade for years um, years ago, and we were talking about yields in the bond market because typically when you have a situation like what's going on in the Middle East, especially like as strong of a situation as it is, you would see, think you would have flight to quality in the bonds, meaning you would be buying the bond market the 10 year and the 30 year and even the short terms and stuff like that. And that's not happening. So where is flight to quality right now? Well, flight to quality is in the U.S. dollar, obviously, because yields are pushing higher. If money's not going into the bond market in a situation like this, that's where it's going to. So it's, it's definitely pretty strong <clears throat> for the U.S. dollar, at least supporting it, at least like keeping it from pulling back, which the dollars do for a correction anyhow. So I think that you have to really look at it that yields right now because of this situation are showing how strong this trend is. And I would be very careful trying to fade the momentum of the yield curve right now, especially with another rate hike looming. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. We're two weeks out today, right, from a Fed decision. We are two weeks out today. And no matter what happens potentially in this meeting, I think the conversation has, has shifted pretty dramatically I mean, over the last couple of weeks in terms of the odds of a hike. We saw the two-year spike in over 5.2%. We got the 10-year, 4.87, I think. I know you talk a lot about the 30-year in your Tiger Forex report as well, pushing 109.22, just over the highs of 106. Um, in terms of price action on the 30 year, Teddy, if you got people out there, where are you looking for potential? I know you got some breakout areas and downside in your newsletter I was checking out, but for the listeners mm -hmm. out there, could you give them a little take on, on the 30 year? I got the chart up here as we talk. Okay, yeah, so for, I'll pull it up real quick. Um, for the 30 year, I would say uh, very likely what's going to happen is you're going to see. Uh, probably, I mean, because we have one more rate hike that's looming, uh, you're going to probably see the trend continue for one. Now, as far as how much further it's going to go, I think we have every bit of a good four or five handles left to go in the bonds. So you're looking at this 110, 109 area. I think it's very rational that be f between now and the end of the year that we probably see the bonds down around the 105 to 106 handle area. So that's still a nice move now with the volatility we've had. It's not that hard to make a move like sure. that happen. Now, if we do get down to that area, will it hold? You mean, like, or is it going to bounce off of it? I think it's probably going to have a nice bounce when we do hit that area. But I would say that, yeah, most likely you're going to see those the yields really push to those levels. I mean, think about this. I went to the bank last week and I was looking at just at the counter when I was making a deposit. You know, you have CDs now for three months going off at f over 5%. That hasn't happened in over a decade, you know. I mean, like the fact that now it's actually you're, when you're. I was standing in line. I'm like, well, okay. So in, in this checking account, why do I have this cash? And I was sitting idly like that now, you know, like for the past four years, especially. I mean, you're making like less than half of a percent. You're not moving your money into a CD and locking that up, and even why wasting your time? But now you're looking at a situation where. Uh, CDs actually are becoming something that while you're sitting on short-term cash or something like especially like real estate deals or what have you they're becoming a very viable option because of this you know so that's also competitive for banks and I think that's also going to support the yields because there's now a demand for being able to put your money away and getting interest <laughs> you know what there's there's a theory you know put your money in a bank and actually get paid for it you know so and I think that that's something that trend is going to maintain itself and once we push these levels like I think where we're at right now we're pushing resistance eventually this is going to become support so I think that you have to look at the bond the bond market and the tenure and the short run short terms that where we're trading right now probably is going to become the floor as we move forward over the next year like a year 
year from now, you will be looking at these levels and being like, ooh, remember when mortgages were only going off at like, you know, 7%, 6%, <laughs> whatever. It would be wild, but 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 it's pretty wild where we are right now in terms of um, it just keeps marching on. Everybody seems like it's going to abate, right? And, and then we go three months forward and we're making new highs on yields. And I love the conversation of CDs because I agree. One thing I keep pulling up during the program, Teddy, is talking about even what a, what a five-year ladder, if you're like laddering a, a CD, can get you right now because I find it so interesting. And you're pushing 5.15%. Um, is it's ballparking around there. You know, if you're taking a one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, you're getting over 5% for a guaranteed, you know, FDIC insured bank CD on a five year basis. And you get to reset it every 12 months. So, you know, if the scenario plays out like you're talking about, right, you're capitalizing that increase in yield. You know, you're not locking in a five year because what if, like you say, rates are going up dramatically. Um, mm -hmm. And I find it so interesting. And then you compare it to the S&P, right? And we're sitting at 4,400. And if you do 5% over five years, you're pushing 5,600 in the S&P, which, yeah, there's a very real chance, okay, this market's over 5,600 in five years. I get that mm -hmm. too. But risk-free, telling a lot right. of people that I can give you the S&P right now at 5,600 in five years and you don't risk a penny, that's a scenario that in my mind, you know, in my adult life that I haven't had to play out, which is pretty interesting. And it's, it's real money when you're above that price level. So I agree. Uh, crude. We got to talk about crude, man. Okay. The Middle East in play, of course. Crude gets a little bit of a lift with, with the action, but uh, nothing too substantial in terms of what's going on in the Middle East. We're trading at 87 bucks. What do you think of crude at these prices? Uh, I think they're, they're definitely pretty much in a stable to uh, you know higher mode. I don't think you're going to see any real sell-off in crude at all um, as long as this uh, conflict between Hamas and Israel remains. And here's the thing is, as long as it's contained where it's at, I think that crude probably is not going to spike too high. I don't see it selling off, but I don't see it really spiking too high. If this spreads with Hamas anywhere else, then I think we're going to have a big problem. Um, then I think you could easily see oil shoot up to $120, $150 like in, in literally a few weeks. You know, yeah. Because if it does spread outside of Israel and uh, Gaza Strip, I mean, you're looking at the oil. It's not just oil production. But the the move the mobility of oil that is produced, you know, and once that happens, you know, it doesn't matter how much oil you're drilling in the Middle East if it can't go anywhere. What does that do to supply and the, and the cost of oil? You know, so I think that's something you really have to pay attention to. If if all of a sudden you start to see any other countries involved, oil I think is going to spike twenty thirty dollars very very quickly. Because right now, you know, remember years ago, if any type of conflict, you would see oil jumping around all over the place. Now it absorbs it very quickly, you know, yeah. so as long as it's contained, I think we're setting a range where the floor is going to be around 80 bucks. Um, but if we, like I said, if it spreads, I can see oil being at easily over 100 to $110 very quickly. Can you hang with us during the break, Teddy? Sure. <clears throat> All right, we'll come back because we. I just want to talk about maybe some of the other currency pairs that we're looking at this sure. week with some action. We'll be right back, back, folks. We'll finish it up with Teddy. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off almost 25 points right now, trading at 43.77. The Dow, how about the Dow? A little bit of a sell-off. You're off by 150. You jump over to Morgan Stanley on their numbers, an acceleration to the downside, off by more than 6% right now. Goldman trading lower, off by 1.7% on those Morgan Stanley numbers. But we're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. We're talking some currencies. Um, We've seen the dollar jump around, Teddy. I wanted to jump to the euro if we could real quickly. Euro, U.S. dollar. I know you're saying everything can always differentiate. We're trading about 104.50. We've had a little bit of a chop even the last five, ten days or so on the euro. What do you think of the action in the euro, if I can ask? Uh, absolutely. Well, right now, I mean, obviously the trend for the dollar has been very strong. We're overdue for at least – a minor correction. I mean, we haven't had really any significant uh, turn in the dollar except for, you know, a small two or three day move here or there. Yeah. And I think that right now, are we, could we have a nice correction? Yeah, I think we could get back to like the 107 area as long as yields stay around where they're at. Um, if they, now if they're pressing higher, then I can't really see that we're going to see much of a rally out of the Euro US dollar. Is it trying to? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of the currencies are pushing extremes right now. If you look at like the Aussie, the New Zealand, you know, uh, but 
what have they been doing? They've been going sideways. And I'll, remember, we do have this Fed meeting coming up in two weeks. So as, as long as, I mean, if oil stays pretty much stable within a trading range of like $10, and if, if the bonds in the 10 year start to stabilize where they're at and trade, like for instance, the bonds is around 109, 110, or 110 area. If it stays within a couple handles of that and doesn't really move and that starts to develop a range trade, then I think you could see a nice spike up where I think you could easily see the euro get back up to like one oh about a dollar oh seven fifty you know something like that um can we get above a dollar oh eight that's kind of a critical area i don't think that's going to happen <clears throat> especially if the uh fed let's say the fed raises rates at the next meeting all of a sudden consensus is like oh they're not going to raise again until next year well slow down there we don't know what the economic numbers are over the next you know couple of weeks let alone the next couple of months you know sure. so and i think that that's going to be very restrictive on the euro especially i don't see it getting too much of a bounce as far as a correction and i would definitely be a seller in that area well teddy i appreciate it as always man we look forward to talking to you next week have a great one we'll talk to you next wednesday man thanks tommy take care thanks so much